Hello, this is Bob McClellan. This is part two of a series of screencasts covering the most important aspects of the Spreadsheet ML in Office Open XML standard. In this screencast, I will discuss the basics of cell values in a spreadsheet. I will show how to represent numbers and strings and also how to format those values using styles. There will not be any code examples, but you can look at my other blog posts on openxmldeveloper.org where you will find specific code examples on these topics. If you are new to Office Open XML and Spreadsheet ML, you should watch part one of this series and also Eric White's screencast about the open packaging conventions first. In part one, I discussed the various parts that could appear in a spreadsheet, and now we'll look at something uh, more concrete, the actual values. Let's get started. In part one, I created this simple spreadsheet that has nothing in it, and I'm going to start here and put some values into this spreadsheet. So I'll just put in um, a few values in that column and one over here and save it. And then I want to open it in Visual Studio, but Visual Studio won't let me open it if it's open in Excel, so I have to close it there first. So now I have it open here, and I'm just going to skip on down to the sheet and look at the sheet data, and here I can see my values. The first one is in cell A1, and I had put a value of 1 there, and then in cell A2 I put a value of 222, and then next to that in B2 on that row is 77, and then the last cell has a, a 3 has a value of 33. Notice that there are no cell values for B1 or if we scroll down B3. The cell values are stored sparsely, meaning that only the actual values that you specify are put in here. Now it does use a row you can see these row, there's a row element for each row that appears, but I can skip rows or columns and it will not fill in, you know, there won't be anything filled in in between. So let's do, look at that. If I go to the very last cell out here and put 999 in there, and then can save it, and I have to close it so I can reload it in here. Now let's see what it shows me. There's my last row, row 1 million whatever, and column XFD, there's my cell value. And you can see that's all it's added on. So I can put anything on anywhere in the spreadsheet and it will just sparsely define where those appear. Now you might be wondering about these spans elements, uh, don't, or attributes. The spans are just used by Excel to figure out where things are and how how things are blocked out. I, uh, it's not important that those be in there. If you were generating this, you wouldn't have to fill in those spans values. Okay, so that shows how you can put values anywhere and they'll be sparsely laid out in there. So if you want to define a particular value, just have to set up the row element for that value and then the column element and its value. Now so far I've only put numbers in there. What happens if I put in a string? So I'll go back to open up my spreadsheet. I'm going to get rid of that. There we are back at the beginning. So let me put some down in here. I'll put in one, one, two, three and save this, close it, and reload. Let's see what it did. So I'm looking at, okay, here's A5, A6, and A7, and what do I have? I have this T tells me that it's a string type, and then I have a value of 0, and a string type value of 1. Well, what does this mean? I, I mean, I didn't put 0, 1, and 2 in there. Well, this actually uh, Excel uses a shared string table so that any repeated string values are shared in one 
location. And there's my table. See, there, there's my 1, 2, and 3. So 1 appears in the first position, which is considered 0, and 2 in the second or number 1 indexed position, and so on. And so if I go back to my spreadsheet, and let's say I put in 1, 2, 3 over here. Now I can see my shared strings are the same. And I go back to my sheet. And now in row 6, or let's start with row 5. So there's my 0 value on the string. And then in the next one I had my 1 value, but then in the next column is 0 value. And 2 and 1 and 2. You see how it's using the same reusing those same strings out of that table and just referring to them by value. So that is a way that Excel keeps from using up a lot of space on string values. And especially if it's a really large spreadsheet, there might be a lot of repeated values that could really save a lot of space if there were, say, 100,000 rows in there with all uh, a lot of similar values. Now, if you were generating this, and let's make a change. I'm going to add my own string in here. Let's. Add, I'm going to add it in as cell A8. I don't have to use that shared string table. I'm going to make this. Instead of a string type, I'm going to use what they call an inline string. And this allows me to put the value in there directly. So now I can just go in here and say inline string and text, or T, and I'll put sample. And I can save this, and then go open it up in Excel. And you can see my sample value is right there. Now I'm going to save it in Excel and go back to my original here. And it says, do you want to reload? I'll say yes. And go to A8. And now we see value 3 in there. And I look over my shared strings. And it has moved my inline string into the shared string table. So I don't really, if I'm generating, I don't have a issue with the size of what I've generated in XML. I can use this in, inline string and let Excel build the shared string table the first time it opens and saves that spreadsheet. So it's not really necessary to manage the shared string table if you're using code to generate the spreadsheet string values. But you certainly can if you want. All right, now, the next thing we probably would want to do with our spreadsheet is maybe format one of these values. So in order to format something, I need to apply a style. And the way you do that in Excel is usually one of these or uh, this kind of layout, uh, you know, these settings. But I'm just going to use uh, a format because this sort of formatting is pretty commonly desirable. Let's say I want to show that as if it were a dollar value. So I'll save that to see what it looks like. Go back here. Let's see how that looks in the sheet now on my 222. And here it is. Oh, it looks exactly the same in the value, but up here in the, uh, there's an S attribute added. That S is a style, number one, and that refers to a table in a styles part. And the styles part is pretty complicated. And here we have the cell XFS table, which you can barely see, but I'm showing not exactly the right thing here. And uh, it's an index table looking very much like cell style XFS. And the zero is the default, which is really no style. It's just the implicit style for anything that doesn't have a style other than zero. So the style one refers to the second entry, which you can't quite see here. 
You'll see it soon, but it looks pretty much the same as Cell Style XFS. And it has a num firmware ID of 44. And you go up here to, with the ID of 44, and then there's this format code. And that big, long format code with the quotes and dollars and pounds and everything, that says I want... That tells me I want a dollar sign and two decimal places on my value. It also says some other things what to do when it's uh, negative and null and all that. Uh, so then if I go back to spreadsheet, let me, s and I'll do another example. Let me say I put this to be bold. That's just a simple font change. I'll go here and reload and look at my sample, which was the string 3. And here is style 2. I'll go back to my styles, look at, so now there's another one in here after the format 44, and here is the a font ID change, and it says font ID 2. So I'm going to go look at my font. And here again, we have a font section, 0, 1, and then 2. And look, there's the bold attribute listed in there. And so you can see also if I change the size or the font, you know, it would just create one of those entries and then refer to it. So that's how, uh, that's the general idea of how the styles work. Now I'm going to show you a couple of variations. So if I go back here. Let's take this 77 and just add a couple decimal places to it. And then reload here. And I'm just going to see, I should be able to just pick it right out of here. I can assume that the next one it's adding in here is the one I just did. And it says number format ID 2. And as I said before, you can find those up in the number format. Now you. You may have noticed before that number formats aren't indexed the same way as the others. They have their own IDs, like this 44 ID is right here. But where's 2? Two? 2's not even in here. That's because there are a certain set of number formats that are already built in. And if we go to the specification and look under the number format uh, within uh, styles on Spreadsheet ML, that number format shows us that there are some built-in IDs, and if we look at number two here, that is 0, 0.00, or a number with two decimal places, which is what I had just applied to that. And so it just picked up and said, oh, that's that's built in. I don't have to define that one. And so th there's a set of those, uh, mostly dates and time stuff. But yeah, there's a whole set of those that are just built in that, that are implicit. Now, one more thing I'm going to demonstrate here. Go back to Excel. And I'm going to take this, uh, well, let's do this one, A5, and write justify, change its alignment. I go back here and reload and see how this is formatted. So now here, you can see there's a new one that has zeros for all of the you know, all of these uh, IDs, but then it has an apply alignment and and then a special alignment horizontal right under as a uh, child element of the XF. So alignment is done right in here. It doesn't apply or refer to any other blocks the way the number formats and fonts do. You can uh, also pretty quickly guess that fills, filling, like the background colors and such and the borders, are also referred to in their own sections, which are up here, the borders section and the fills section are right there. Uh, I have another screencast that covers styles in even more detail, but I, this shows, I think, enough to do the most common things you'd want to do in a spreadsheet. The only other styles we could talk about are table styles and pivot table styles, and those are very specific. They don't really use the same tables at all. So I'm you know, it, they're not that hard to deal with. Uh, tables create their own part that specifies the style by name, or you can uh, specify it specifically. I think I'll do it briefly here. I'll just show you how I can go in here. 
I can say, oh, I want to make this a table. Okay, and then I can pick a style that I want it to be, maybe that one, save. And, and you know, just by doing the same sort of process, you can very quickly figure out how this all fits together. So I'm going to look at my sheet. It now has a table part that it refers to. If I look in the sheet, there is there is the table part explicit reference. Uh, the table part is going to define which cells are in that table part. So here it tells me where the column, you know, everything about where the table is. And then down at the bottom we have the style info and it has a name for what style it is and some other things about what it's going to show in that style. Those styles are built in. Uh, I don't, they don't even appear except by name. You know, here's uh, some defaults on what it will use for table styles, but otherwise it doesn't even show up in here. So they're really pretty straightforward. Uh, and pivot tables styling look, works much the same way. Um, so I think that's all I'm going to cover right now on the cell values and styles. Next time I'm going to cover the uh, what I think is the last big part of a spreadsheet, which is, of course, formulas and the calculation chain. So look for part three coming soon.